Hip arthritis, non-operative treatment. What can you do other than a hip replacement to deal with your hip arthritis? So non-operative treatment of hip arthritis. Yes, here we are. Okay. We're gonna give you your top 10. 10. 10. Okay, you go. There's actually a couple special mentions at the end. Okay, so number one is activity modification. So you have a sore hip. There are certain things that bother you. We say, don't do them. Don't run barefoot on concrete. Well, that's one of them for sure. Avoiding high impact activity, often avoiding deep bending or crouching, getting in and out of a car, uh, on and off low seated chairs. Try to set yourself up for success during the day. Have a pillow for underneath your seat. Raise it right up. You're playing hacky sack. You're playing too much hacky sack. You're probably not playing hacky sack if you have a really arthritic hip. Okay, the second thing is weight loss. Reduce your weight. That, yes. We say that about everything and you're probably sick of hearing it, but yes. reducing your weight can help the symptoms of hip arthritis. 100%. Number three is physiotherapy, massage, acupuncture. So those modalities, first for physio, working on your range of motion and strengthening. The one caveat that I would say compared to knee arthritis is that sometimes when you do physiotherapy for hip arthritis, it actually makes it more sore. Mm, physical therapy. Physical therapy. Yes. So we want you to be stronger around the hip, but obviously within the limits of your pain and common sense. It may hurt at the beginning, but I think the long-term payoff is good. And there are a few specific programs, the GLAD program and yes. other fancy acronyms that describe sort of physical therapy protocols, uh, but that definitely can help. The next one. Sorry, when it comes to massage and acupuncture for me, I'd say the literature is a little softer. Certainly we have lots of patients who report benefits, so it's kind of just see how it goes for you. There. All right. Uh, then the next one to talk about is bracing or orthotics. Yep. I'm not aware of a lot of evidence that show they work. Yep. I mean, I've seen hip braces before. The hip unloader is yeah. an interesting one. It seems cumbersome. It does. Never tried one, never prescribed one, nope. but it's out there. Yep. And what about orthotics? Same. I mean, uh, I've, I've seen them used uh, for hip arthritis, yep. but I never prescribed them for hip arthritis. The one time an orthotic may provide a benefit is in that period while you're waiting for hip replacement if your leg is significantly short. Ooh. So that orthotic is more like a lift cause, because as your hip loses its cartilage on both the femoral head and the socket, it gets shorter, like functionally shorter. So that could lead to a limp and throw your back off. So if you, often I tell people, buy a set of over-the-counter orthotics and put both of them in the, in the short leg. Then you don't have to have a custom You can't buy two rights or two lefts. But sometimes, oh, sometimes the cheaper ones, they're not even right and left. They're kind of, you know, cut them and modify them. Right. Yeah, not, it, not fancy ones. I call it shoe lift. <laughs> a shoe lift. Shoe yeah. Lift. Or a shoe lift. Yes. The shoe yeah. lift is a little more complicated because it goes outside the shoe and it's irreversible. Yeah. But and you can also get little lifts up to about a centimeter that go inside your shoe. Nice. So I like that for leg length, discrepancy, and or, uh, a shoe lift. Might okay. Be. Number five is foods. So we've talked a lot about foods on our channel, things that are, are beneficial, but particularly things that are inflammatory and things that are anti-inflammatory. So avoid sugars, refined grains, and processed foods because those are all known to be inflammatory as well as saturated fat. And there are many, many foods on a video that we can link to the bottom that are known to be anti-inflammatory. And when we talk about foods, it is an inflammatory topic. Number six, medications. Okay. First thing I'm going to talk about is over-the-counter medications. Okay. These are basically acetaminophen. Yep. Uh, or some form of NSAID or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. That's okay. your ibuprofen, yep. naproxen, those kind of things. Okay. But those can be beneficial. Of course, be careful with the acetaminophen because yep. it can affect your liver. Yep. Be careful with the NSAIDs because they can affect your GI tract or your kidneys. Always check with your healthcare provider before you take a new medication. Okay. Kind of along the same line, we're going to talk about supplements. So things like glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM, turmeric. Turmeric. With an R. You wear that sign. You wear the R. There are so many of them. This is a very big business and many, many people will report benefits with them. We would say the beneficial um, effects are usually in the 30 to 40% range, which is coincidentally the placebo size. So be careful. The risk is primarily financial. Make sure it doesn't uh, conflict with any of your other medications or other things that you're doing, um, but might be worth a try. Okay. The next one is prescription medication. Yes. Okay. So you've tried some over the counter medications and they have not worked for you. Yep. You could turn to a prescription medication, which is often just a stronger form of an anti-inflammatory Yep. or a more modern anti-inflammatory that's more specific for joint inflammation and maybe has better side effect profile. Right. And then also in the prescriptions are narcotics. Do not recommend using narcotics to, man to manage hip arthritis. I don't. Anyway. I would say a hard no on narcotics for arthritis. And easy for us to say, because some people are like, well, listen, I've tried everything. I can't live my life like this. So 
yeah, it needs a very long, serious discussion with your doctor because the trouble is with narcotics, it's gonna help the pain short term, but you're just gonna get progressively more used to them, and then you need more of them. And then once it comes to your surgery, if you go on to have a hip replacement, it becomes a little more complicated to control your post-operative pain, so. And then you're gonna find yourself on a Netflix special called Painkiller or yeah. a Disney special called Dope Sick. Dope Sick. Yeah. Watch those. Yeah, bit, yeah, that'll make you not want to take them for sure. Okay, number nine is topical medication. So this is a branch of, I'd say, medicine that's really grown in the last 10 years where more and more research has been done to show this can make a difference for you in a very, very safe way. So whether that's a local anesthetic, an anti-inflammatory, a nerve agent, even CBD now has become more popular topically. So this has been shown in, I think what Paul's about to say is that is often described as the first line treatment for arthritis. No, I was going to say it's a topical subject right now. Oh, okay. Topical, so I agree. It is a yeah. first, line, first line treatment for a lot of arthritis yeah. in different parts of the body. Okay. Um, okay, so the next thing, we've tried something on top of the joint, yep. outside of the joint, we've taken something systemically. Yep. Uh, the next thing will be injections. Okay. You're going to hear about injections and you're going to be wondering, do injections work for my hip arthritis? Okay, so first of all, what do we inject in the hip? In the hip, we are usually injecting some local anesthetic, Yep. a corticosteroid, Yep. Uh, and sometimes uh, hyaluronic acid or a lubrication, the gel injections. Do they work? I don't routinely recommend them. I have heard anecdotally people say, yeah, they do work. Uh, they're temporary relief. A few things about the hip, it's harder to inject into the hip, so you need some sort of image guidance to do it, whether that's a CT or an ultrasound. Right. Um, and the results are pretty temporary. Yeah. And if you're planning to have your hip replaced at some point down the road, there is some evidence to suggest that if you get an injection and have your hip replaced too soon to when you had that injection, yep. there is a risk of infection, right. an increased risk of infection when you have the hip replacement. So, so be I, careful. So I'd agree. I have a handful of patients who had it done a bunch of different times and have had benefit from it, but others who have tried. And it's usually people that are like, listen, I can't have a hip replacement right now, but I need something, so it's worth a try. One of the big benefits though is with the local anesthetic, it can be diagnostic as well as therapeutic. So if you're not sure if you have like some hip pain or some knee pain um, or some back pain, you're not sure which one's the most problematic. Sometimes if you freeze them, you say, okay, that removed my number one source of pain. That can tell you that, okay, the hip is in fact the problem. Yeah, good. For diagnosis, it can be helpful. Right. I agree. And that kind of leads into what two of our kind of honorable mentions. Well, that was 10. That was 10, yeah. yeah. So one of our honorable mentions is make sure that you're treating hip pain. Because a lot of people say, oh, I'm, I have a sore hip and they touch the side of their hip and I'm like, actually where your point is probably more likely to be bursitis than mm -hmm. hip arthritis. Right. Or they point back here and I'm like, oh, that actually is more likely to be your low back than your hip. So we want to make sure we're treating the right problem. Fun fact. Yep. Children in particular and some adults will yes. present with knee pain yep. when it's actually the hip. Yep. It's a referred pain. So some, I always, always, always check the hip when yes. someone comes in complaining of knee pain because sometimes the pathology is in the hip yep. and you're feeling it in the knee. Yeah, which is kind of opposite of what you're saying because you're feeling the hip, but it's coming from somewhere else. But oftentimes you can't have back pain and you think it's your hip. I see that very often in the sure. office. Uh, and of course, doing anything to treat the hip is not going to help that pain. That's not. And then the last thing is is those other kind of wackier stuff, things like you know magnets or copper or. You know, special by, types of braces. By wacky, you mean non-mainstream? Because that's a scientific no. term that we often use in medicine. Yeah, just because, just because there's less evidence for it, but still there would be people that would say, hey, this really makes a difference for us. And at the end of the day, we just want our patients to have less pain. Yeah. As long as it's safe for you, we really yeah. have nothing to gain by you taking anything or trying something. I think it's always worth trying if it's safe. Yeah, if it's safe. But there are some uh, unconventional things like the copper, or the magnet, sure. uh, whatever else you can think of. Um, but yeah, again, there's that placebo effect. So if it 100%. is helping you, go for it. Yes, and, and we recognize that hip arthritis is very debilitating. Access to hip surgery is not as expedited as we want in some places. So you're, you're forced to look for other ways to control your symptoms and keep living your life and doing things that you have to do every day. Having said all that, okay. the results of hip replacement surgery are very, very, very good. good. People, it's one of the best surgeries out there. People love their hips. People like, unlike knee replacement, where there's a lot of people who aren't totally happy with their knees, it's very unusual to find someone who's not happy with their hip replacement. Yeah, I would say people like their knees, people love their hips. There you go. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.